Today's lesson, lesson 32, series versus parallel circuits. We will explore the difference between a series and a parallel circuit. Now, this lesson is the build up from the last two lessons. The first lesson last time was about, last lesson was talking about Kirchhoff's law, talked about the current in is the same as the current out. I've added this picture to this slide, but you've got this two amps coming in, two and three amps going here, and then you get five. You can actually see all these grouping electrons are grouping together. Now it's not actually sort of what exactly looks like, but it's a good sort of analogy for what's going on here. We did some examples, we did some complex examples in an actual circuit. And then we looked at Kirchhoff's second rule which was essentially the voltage drops need to add to the EMF. Ultimately, the energy that's here needs to get lost here. And we did some calculations on that. And then, yesterday we started on circuit components. So here's that variable resistor that I'm talking about. So the arrow, notice that's got the arrow. Arrow means variable, where it's just blank, it's a battery or a cell. We said that this long thin stick is the positive side and this is the negative side. We said current comes out of the positive because it's conventional current and goes into the negative. We also talked about um, the reason we said there's a long thin stick. If you break that long thin stick in half, then you would end up with two sticks and then you could put those over the top of each other to get a positive side. Whereas you can't snap a big thick stick like that it's going to stay negative. Um, now, we talked about voltage drops. Then we started to talk about series circuits. We said a series circuit only has one path for the electrons to go through. So because the series circuit only has one path for the electrons to go through, if that's the path it does. Now, that path we said is, um, it's called the series because essentially, what happens is that everything in that circuit eventually runs all the way through. And then when it gets to the end of that circuit, it can only go through in a certain path. So it can only go through one after the other, after the next. That's why it's called a series circuit. Then lastly, we spent, talked about, well, how does it drop voltage? Most people initially think that it drops it unfairly, like a running man gets tired, and therefore puts less energy into the second globe. I always find myself telling students, no, that's not how it works. If it, could, if it only needed three volts to get through that circuit, then that's as much as the, it would try to use. It would only use three volts here. And so therefore, if it did use five volts, then it would do it faster. With a, you would still lose five volts at each, but it would, be, it would go through the whole circuit faster. It's not going to waste voltage going through one and dropping more voltage. But the other reason why I did this is because I started to say, well, what happens if you look at current? Let's say this was negative seven volts and this is negative three volts. If we went I equals V over R, if I drop seven volts over, you know, 10 ohms, then that's going to be 0 0.7 amps. But if I drop here, If I drop here three volts over 10 amps, then that's going to be 0 0.3 amps. And so here's the question, right? How can you go from 0 0.7 amps going in to 0 0.3 amps going out? That breaks Kirchhoff's rule. You've got more current, more electrons per second. It's moving slower coming out than it's going in. Going in, it's got more electrons per second. It's going faster. That doesn't work. You can't change the flow of a circuit without, it's like trying to say, I've got a pipe that's got this much water in it. I've got a pipe that's got this much water in it. And then all of a sudden, when I look at this end, it's only got this much water in it. I can't drop, where's that extra water going? It doesn't make sense. That's why you can't have uneven voltage drops if they're the same resistance. Ultimately, the resistance changes the current and the, the resistance changes how much 
flow can go through, how much energy can get dropped off. Now, whew, series versus parallel circuits. Let's go. Um, there's a quick warning here. There will be some mathematical proofs. You do not need to know how to do these proofs. I'm just showing you these proofs just for the context of showing you how they work. If you want to like tune out for a second when I'm doing the proofs and go grab a glass of water, sure. But I am showing it because there are some people, probably some people listening now, that this stuff will make sense to them. They'll understand the proofs. And it might actually help them understand this topic later on. Um, but yeah, just a warning heads up. Firstly, I want to talk about one more thing about order and not mattering. In this circuit, I've got a two ohm resistor and eight ohm resistor and a two eight ohm resistor and two ohm resistor. The current is going to go around the circuit like so. Now, if this drops two volts, this will drop eight volts. If this drops eight volts, then this will drop two volts. It's exactly the same as the equation that I did before. The only difference is that the voltages are different because this is an eight ohm resistor. This is only a two ohm resistor. It's harder to get through this resistor than it is this one. This one's like trying to fit through a big gap. Whereas this one is trying to fit through a very, very, very small gap. It's going to take a lot of energy to fit through this small gap. So that's why, because it takes a lot of energy to fit through that small gap, that's why this voltage drop is so high. Now the current is going to be the same. The current here is going to be the same as the current here. The amount of flow is going to be the same. The reason the amount of flow is going to be the same is because the current has to be the same. Now, again, for this one, it's still going to drop 8 volts first because it still needs that amount of energy to get through this small gap. And it doesn't need that much energy to get through this bigger gap. So, again, it's going to be 8 volts and 2 volts. Those are going to be the drops. What's important here is, and the lesson I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter if the two ohm resistor comes first or the two ohm resistor comes second. It doesn't matter where it goes, you're going to need eight volts to get through that first, that eight ohm resistor. So therefore, it doesn't matter where it comes, you're going to need two volts to get through it. And the reason you need eight volts to get through this eight ohm resistor is because you want to make sure the current that you use to get through this resistor is the same as the current that you will use to get through this resistor. Now, we're going to look at the resistance rule for a series circuit. Now again, if you're sitting there, this is the part where I'm going to go through a little bit of a proof. You don't have to learn this, you can just learn the rule that I'm going to show you on the next slide. I'm going to show you a bit of a proof. We know that the current through the circuit is the same. The current through here is going to be the same as the current through B here. It's going to be the same as the current through here. The reason? Because it's a series circuit. The current that goes in has to be the same as the current that goes out. This is Kirchhoff's rule. I in equals I out. First rule, Kirchhoff's rule. The voltage is going to be also a known factor. We know that the V, the voltage drop at A plus the voltage drop at B plus the voltage drop at C is going to be equal to the total voltage, 12 volts. We know if I add each of those voltages up, then it would have to be VT. Because remember, the voltage drop in a loop is equal to the EMF. So these two things are Kirchhoff's rules. Here's Kirchhoff's first one, here is his second one. 
Now, now, what can we do with this to talk about resistance? Well, I want to show you this. This formula here, I I is V equals I R. If I take the formula V equals I R, and I took V A equals I A times R A, then that means that this is actually the same as this. This is the same as this. This is the same as this, and this is the same as this. The only difference is, is that I'm using I R instead of V. Now what I can do with this is that I happen to know that IA, I happen to know that IA, IB, IC and IT are all the same. So I can replace them with IT, 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 IT. And it just so happens if I know that all of these are IT, I can divide by IT and cancel them all out. What that does is it gives us this idea here. And this is the rule. The resistance RA plus RB plus RC is equal to RT. And what this means is the total resistance sometimes also known as the effective resistance or equivalent resistance, is equal to the sum of each resistor. So it's like saying, if I, it's like saying instead of a 10 ohm resistor, I have one big 30 ohm resistor. So three 10 ohm resistors because 10 plus 10 plus 10 is equal to 30. And it sort of makes a little bit of sense. I want to talk to you guys about this. If you imagine that each of those resistors, right, is slowing the flow of current, right? The first one slows it a little bit. The second one slows it a little bit more. The third one slows it a little bit more. So instead of each of these slowing it, slowing the current down a little bit, what if we just have one big resistor that slowed the current down a lot all at once? And believe it or not, these two things are exactly the same. Having three 10 ohm resistors or having one 30 ohm resistor is the same. So therefore, this is our resistance rule. This is our resistance rule for series circuit. If you don't understand this part here, over on the left, this is, over on the right, sorry, that is our, um, this here is our extra sort of like, you don't need to know that part. If you understood it, great. That's really good. But you don't really need to know where that comes from. You just need to know this rule down the bottom. Now it's called effective equivalent resistor because when you have three resistors, there isn't a resistor called the total resistance. But you could say it's having a 30 ohm resistor is equivalent is an equivalent resistor. It's equal to the same resistor. Or we sometimes say it's effective. It's having three 10 ohm resistance is as equivalent to having one 30 ohm resistor. So it's just a different way. And different textbooks and exams and tests will use different words. I personally prefer the word effective resistance, but I've seen some books prefer equivalent resistance. I don't really think there's a difference, but it's up to you guys which one you use. So, the three rules for a series circuit. The total current is equal to, the total current is equal to the, the first current, the second current, all the currents everywhere in a series circuit are the same because there's only one path for them to go down. Um, as for resistance, the resistance is the total of all the resistors. If you add them all together, and that goes from two to three to four to five, you just add the resistors together. The voltage drop, so the EMF, the V total or the EMF, the voltage of the battery, 
is equal to the sum of all of the voltage drops. So if you, because again, there's only one path. So you just have to add all the voltage drops together to figure out how much voltage is going to be dropped overall. Now, where can we take this further? Let's do some, let's do a quick example about effective resistance first, and then we'll come together and we'll try and do this. What is the effective resistance of, uh, of a 2.4 kilo ohm, 3.8 kilo ohm, and a 500 ohm resistor in series? Well, calculate this. The total resistance is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. R1 is 2,400 ohms because it's 2.4 kilo ohms. 3.8 kilo ohms, 3,800 ohms plus 500 ohms. That means the total resistance is going to be, did I say 300? I meant 500. 2400 plus 3800 plus 500 equals 6700 or 6.7 kilo ohms. Right, I want you guys to work out this one on your own. It's a little bit more confusing, but I want you to see if you can work out what the answer to this one is. Once you've got an answer, either call it out loud or write it down in chat. And we've got our first answer in chat. First answer, 2,400 ohms. Anthony, let's see if you're right. Did anyone else agree with you? Looks like... Brendan did agree with you, so let's check if you two are right. RT equals, well, we're going to sum up R1 plus R2, da, 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 all the way up to R20, which is going to be 120 plus 120 plus 120. Uh, there's an easier way to do this. 20 times. 120. We've got 20 times 120. Instead of adding it up 120 times, uh, 20 times, let's just go 20 times 120. 20 times 120 happens to be 2,400 ohms or 2.4 kilo ohms. Okay. Now, now we're going to try this. What I'd like people to do, we're going to pause for a second. I would like everyone to now jump on. Oh, hold on a sec. Oh, that hasn't worked. Hold on a sec. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Talk among you. Give me. Sorry. What I would like you to do now is I would like you to jump onto the Socrative page. That's the other page that I sent you to. So just move away from, from this and you should see on that Socrative page there is a question. Now, if you came late to this lesson, you may not know what we're talking about. Um, and I'll quickly show you guys that now. But became late to this what i would like you to do i think a lot of people have figured it out so i'm just going to keep this slide open for a second while people are doing it uh no can you can't redo the question the only way you can redo the question is if i get everyone to redo the question um So you just gonna have to leave it as it is. OK. 
came. All right, I'm just gonna quickly show people what we're doing. Um, for those of you that missed out on what the heck's going on here, what we did is at the start of the lesson, I showed students this page on the front page, I gave you guys a link. And I told you in that link to go to a page called Socrative. If you click on this, it'll take you to here. And in here, you should type in Greer class. Now, if you were to type in Greer class, let me show you what you should see. You should see this come up here and you've got five options, A, B, C, D and E. Now, those five options I've asked you guys to do. Um, I've asked you guys these five options. I understood everything really well and you could explain it to someone else. I understand everything really well. That's I everything well. I understand everything, but might have to ask for some help. Sir is going too fast. That should be T double O. I've made a typo there. And I'm only understanding the basics and I have no idea what's going on. Now, I can quickly now see the reason I'm doing this is because it's really, really useful. I can now jump over to here and see if, oh, okay, if I refresh maybe, oh, it's logging out because I'm logged in on my phone. But the advantage is I can quickly see, oh, I can't show you this. Okay. But I can get a quick look and see that most people are getting this, but they need a little bit of help. 44% of people have said they're at the top. So what I'm going to do, and that's 16 students have answered it. So I'm going to finish that there and I'm going to leave it and we're going to carry on. So, and then what I'm going to do is during the lesson, we've got two more times that I'm going to ask you this question. So, and that's when I ask you the question, I'm just gonna quickly see whether or not you understand what's going on and then we'll quickly move on. So it looks like people got it. So let's keep going. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at three circuits for a voltage circuit. Now, those of you that have done my engineering maths class, I have just taken these examples from my engineering maths class. So you, so for a lot of you guys, this should be you know, maybe something you've seen before. But for a lot of you guys who didn't do it, you know, this might be brand new to you completely. That's okay. I mean, granted, you still should have done some of this in year nine, but if this is all brand new, then we're gonna take it through slowly. And I'm going to try and explain, I'm gonna try and do six examples, but I don't think I'm gonna get time to do six examples. So we're gonna do, at least we're gonna finish off series circuits. Now this drawing is a circuit. We've got two light bulbs here as, as our resistors. It's a six volt circuit with um, two and four ohm resistors. These resistors are the same, so they should have the same voltage drop. We're gonna work out the voltage drops for these resistors, and we're gonna work out the current. And we're gonna do that using all of the information that we've learned, the two Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law. I'm gonna call this resistor resistor A, and I'm gonna call this resistor resistor B. Now, first up, I could very, very quickly solve this. I can tell you straight away that three volts are gonna get dropped over the first, and three volts are gonna get dropped over the second. If they're the same resistor, then I know the voltage drops about them are going to be exactly the same. Um, and therefore they must share the six volts because they've got to drop six volts over the whole thing. So each of those is going to share six volts. Now I could just do that straight away. But I want to show you guys, I want to spend a little bit more time on this question. I'm going to show you guys a technique that I've been showing my year 10 students for a couple of years now how to do these kinds of problems. We're going to do that by this method here. Now, we've got VA, VB, 
and VT. Now, from the picture, it doesn't tell us what the what the voltage drop over A is. It doesn't tell us what the voltage drop over B is. It does tell us the total voltage though. The total voltage is six volts. So I'm gonna write six volts up here. Now, let's continue. Let's look at the resistance. The resistance, RA. Yep, they've told us what RA is. That's four ohms. RB. Yep, they've told us the resistance is four ohms. Now, they haven't told us the total resistance. We can probably work that out, but I'm just going to leave that for the moment. Current IA, we don't know. IB, we don't know. IT, the total current, we don't know. We don't know anything about the current. So therefore, I'm just going to leave them blank. And so now what we have is we have all of the information that we can visually see straight up onto, the, onto a chart that looks like this. Now I usually set them up into nine by nine charts. Obviously, if you had more voltages, more resistors, they would fit down the bottom. Or if you had more wires and stuff, you would fit them down the bottom as well. You could go RA, RB, RC, RD, so on and so forth. You might have more than one resistor and a wire. So VRA1, RA2. But the moment we're just gonna stick with this. Now, we are now going to fill in some of these gaps. First gap I'm going to fill in is this one here. RT is going to be RA plus RB. We just did the total resistance is equal to the individual resistors. We did that here and we did that here. So we've seen that a couple of times now. So let's just do that. Let's do it. 4 ohms plus 4 ohms equals 8 ohms in total. That is our total resistance. Okay. Now, at this point here, I would then say, well, we still don't know any information about the voltage drops. We still don't know any information about the current. But I want you guys to look now at this. We know the total voltage, we know the total resistance, so we can use that to find the total current. I'm always going to look at with this method whenever I have two things in a row. Because when I have two things in a row, I can work out the third one. That means, how do I do that? V equals IR. V divided by R equals I equals the voltage is six volts. The resistance, eight ohms. That means that it's 0 0.75. I have a current of 0 0.75 amps. Okay. Now, if I know that the current is 0 0.75 amps, it's the total current, there's only one way for the current to go through the circuit. It's only one way. So therefore, the current here matches the current here, matches the current here, because there's only one path. There's only one way for the current to go through. There's only one value for all these currents to be. So all of these values are 0 0.75. Now, now I can do that same trick that I just did, but I can do it here. Because all I know those three. So doing that trick, VB is equal to IB times RB equals 0 0.75 times RB, which is 4, 
equals 3 volts. So, VB is 3 volts. And because I'm lazy, VA is going to also be 3 volts because 0 0.75 times 4 is 3. So that means our voltage drops here are 3 volts and 3 volts. And our current through the whole circuit is 0 0.75. Now, if I had more resistors, it would just be the case of repeating this process a couple more times. But ultimately, I find that it's really easy just to start off with something like this. Let's break down what we did, a couple of things that we did here. What we were able to do is we were able to calculate the total resistance. And we did this using our resistance law. We were able to work out the current was the same because of Kirchhoff's law. I in equals I out. We know that there is only one part, so the currents must be the same. And then all of these other ones we did using Ohm's law. Ohm's law being V equals IR. So with those three laws, we were able to calculate everything with the circuit. We can also check using Kirchhoff's law. The voltage drops, three volts plus three volts equals the EMF, which is six volts. So we can check Kirchhoff's law is holding up. So that's how you would break down a series circuit. I'm going to do two more examples of this to get a little bit more confident and then we're going to see how we go. The next one is going to look very similar. The difference here of course is that the, the difference here of course is that these two resistors are different in size. One is 1 ohm, one is 3 ohms. Who can tell me just without even looking at this, which of these two, A or B, is going to drop the greater voltage? Which one do you think is going to have a higher voltage drop, A or B? Just let me know in chat. A or B, highest voltage drop. B. B is going to have a higher voltage drop, correct, Kelvin? Because B has a higher resistance. It's going to be harder for the electrons to get through. In order to get through in a timely manner, they're going to have to drop a fair bit of more energy. In order to get through there at the same pace as through the first one, you're going to need to lose a little bit more energy to get through. Let's check to see if that hypothesis is true. So how do I do this one? Same method. I'm going to go VA, VB, VT. I don't know what VA is. Don't know how many volts is going to get dropped over one. Don't know how many volts is going to get dropped over two. B. But I know that six volts gets dropped over all. So I know it's going to be uneven. I know this one's going to drop more than this one. So I know that's at least one thing I do know. The resistance, hey, hey, I can do the resistance. RA is 1 ohm. RB is 3 ohms. RT, the total voltage, well, let's just do that now because we can. It's a series circuit, so therefore we add all these up. RT equals RA plus RB. It's going to be 1 plus 3, which is four ohms. Looking at the current now, we don't know what the current through A is. We don't know what the current through B is. We don't know what the current, the total current is. But, hey, hey, we now know a V, an R, we can work out an I. 
V equals I R. I equals V divided by R. So the total current is equal to total voltage divided by total resistance equals six divided by four. Six divided by four, which is three over two, is one is going to be one point five. And because we know, according to Kirchhoff's law, that if it's 1.5 amps here, there's going to be 1.5 amps here, and it's going to be 1.5 amps here, it's going to, all of these values are going to be 1.5. Beautiful. Which means that using Ohm's law, VA equals IA times RA equals 1.5 times 1, which is 1.5 volts. And VB equals IB times RB using Ohm's law. I kind of like to think of this a little bit like Sudoku. I was like, oh, now I can work out this square because I know this row um, is going to be 1.5 times 3, which is going to be 4.5 volts. But of course, like Sudoku, there's always two ways to solve something, right? You can look at the columns, or you can look at you can look at the rows, or you can look at the columns. You could say, I know Kirchhoff's law means that six volts needs to get dropped over the whole thing. I know six volts needs to get dropped over the whole thing. I already know 1.5 volts is dropped here, so the rest must get dropped over VB. Six volts minus 1.5 is 4.5 volts. There's two ways you could have figured out VB. Uh, might even do this VT. VB equals VT minus VA. VB equals 60. Yeah. That's just another way that you could have solved that. But yeah, that means that. Let's check. We've got 4.5 volts here. We've got 1.5 volts getting lost here, which works with exactly what we were saying before. What we were saying before was this one is going to drop more voltage than this one. You can also look at the voltage drops as the electricity goes around the circuit. It starts off here with 6 volts. It then loses 1.5, which means it's got 4.5 volts here. It loses 4.5, which means it's got zero volts here. Okay, beautiful. Let's look at the last of our three series examples. That's this one here. Now, I threw this one in here to try and give you guys a bit of a spanner in the works, a bit of a, ooh, this is a bit weird, it's a bit different. And that's on purpose, because they're not all going to look like what we did before. Let's try and do the same method, and we'll see what happens. Well, BA, I don't know what the voltage drop over A is, so I'm just going to leave that blank. VB, I don't know what the voltage drop over BB is, so I'm going to leave that blank. VT, I know the voltage drop is, oh, that's an X. Bugger. I guess I don't know what the total of voltage shock is either. All right, well, we know nothing about the voltage. But that's okay. Maybe we know stuff about the resistance. RA, well, we know that one's 3 ohms. That's something. RB, well, we know that one's 4 ohms. RT, well, we know that RT is going to be RA plus RB. 
plus RC, plus RD, plus RE, so on and so forth. That's going to be 3 plus 4, which is going to be 7 ohms. Now, what about the current? Sorry, bumped my thing. Do we know the current? IA, we don't know. IB, we don't know. IT, we do know, actually. It says it here. It's 0 0.4 amps. The total current is 0 0.4, which means that the current through B must be 0 0.4, which means the current through A must be 0 0.4. Because remember, all the voltage in must be the same as the voltage out. And it, no, so the current in must be the same as the current out. And if there's only one way for the current to go, the current must be the same. Cool. That means that I can easily work out these three by going VA equals IA times RA, which is going to be 3 times 0 0.4. VB is going to be IB times RB, which is going to be uh, 4 times 0 0.4. And VT is going to be IT times RT, which is going to be, um, I got those the wrong way around, sorry. Seven, which means that the doing these real quick is going to be 1.2 volts, 1.6 volts, and if you add those together, 0 0.7 is going to be 2.8 volts. You can add these together because remember the voltage drop is the total current, so VT is going to be. VA plus VB, which is like going to be 1.2 plus 1.6 equals 2.8. Or you could use this method here, 2.8 volts. Doesn't matter, but you will still get the right answer. So again, even though they've given us different things, we can still work this out. Now in the past, I've given this question, we have gotten rid of one of the resistors. You didn't know what the resistors were. But even if you don't know what the resistors are, you can still work backwards to figure out, well, I know what the total current is, so I can know what the total resistance is. If I know what the total resistance is, I can work out an individual resistor. If you don't know what the, yeah, if you don't know what the voltage drop over one resistor is, you can again use the same sort of method. This will allow, as long as you are careful, the rows, rows you can calculate using Rows you can calculate using V equals IR. The columns you can calculate using the three rules. The current is the same. RT equals RA plus RB. And VT equals VA plus VB. It's pretty just adding those together. So that, those are definitely some rules that you can use to solve them. Right. Let's do this. I'd like you to tell me, right, how much you understand this stuff. So quickly go back to the Socrative page. I'm going to open up a new question, assuming that I haven't been logged out. A means you understood the you understood that section really well, so well that you could teach someone else. B means you understood it pretty well. This so is just quickly jot down what you're doing. Remember, I've still got, only got 18 students, so someone hasn't got it. Okay, let me know what you guys think. Um, I assume you guys can still see the screen, yes? Yep. I'm going to leave a little bit longer. Just really quickly, can someone just type in chat though, 
at the moment, when you're looking at the Zoom, can you see the PowerPoint still? Or is it changed to another slide? Just tell, tell me if you can. Yes, I can. We still see the PowerPoint because I can't tell from this end of the Zoom what you guys can and can't see. Okay, thanks, Wuchang. All right. And I'm going to stop here. Okay, now. This is what I've been looking at. So if I quickly look at this, again, we've got B now being the most prevalent, um, showing me that you guys are mostly understanding what's going on. Um, but, you know, that I've got a couple, and I've got a fair few A's of people like, yeah, I know what I'm doing, I've done this before, I've got this in the bag. But I've also got a couple of people that are, you know, I got one. That couple looks like a couple of people. Twenty percent of people are sitting on about a quarter of the people in the class are like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is going a little bit too quickly for me. Maybe just slow down a little bit." So, um, I'm going to keep going at this pace. That if I start to see, you know, more than twenty-five percent of you guys start to say you're going too quick, I'm going to slow down a lot. Okay, but. Again, if you are in that bottom 25%, um, um, no, well, okay. Maybe I'll slow down a little bit more because that just jumped up to a lot more people. Now we're looking at more like 30% of people aren't getting it. So I might slow down a little bit, um, but that's okay. I'm going to finish this question here. I'm going to come back to it later on. I've got one more time where I'm going to ask you guys how we're going. So I'm going to go a little bit slower. Remember though, guys, if you've got a question or a query that you need help with, you need to let me know, you know, sooner rather than later. Okay, we're gonna talk about parallel circuits now. Um, and with parallel circuits, I'm definitely not gonna get through all the parallel circuits, but we're gonna make a start. Um, parallel circuits look like um and this is going to be a warning by the way heads up we're going to be doing some more deriving some things here so if you are not if this isn't your jam if you're not comfortable with it then that's okay you don't have to understand everything but you do need to understand the rules okay on the left here we have a parallel circuit now i haven't actually defined parallel circuits which is not very smart of me here a parallel circuit is different from a series circuit because there are multiple branches that be and these multiple branches run in parallel which means they don't cross because if you look these two don't cross but you can go down one or the other you have to choose and make a choice now we've just done already based off Let's talk about the Kirchhoff's laws that we've already learned for this. We know the Kirchhoff's laws that the voltage drops of each of these loops must be 10 volts. What we've also learned from Kirchhoff's laws is we've also learned that if this is VA, and this is so if this is IA. This is IB and this is IC, then these will be the sum of all these together. So this here will be IA plus IB, and this will be IA plus IB plus IC, which is going to give us our total current. What that means is that our very first thing we know is that. Let's talk about the voltage again. The voltage drops are going to be the same. The voltage drops 
through A is going to be the same as the voltage shot through B. It's going to be the same as the voltage shot through C. It's going to be the total voltage. All of these rows are going to drop 10 volts, no matter what. Now, it just so happens that, and we just did this rule right here, the total current is going to be the same as if I, the total current is going to be adding each individual branch together. Now you might say, well, why is there multiple branches for? Because they are splitting. The current splits. Some goes up, some goes to the right. And that splitting current is why we end up with, if you add all the splitted currents together, you will get the total current. Now, let's look at the actual maths here. What if instead of, what if instead of I, I use V over R? So VA over RA plus VB over RB plus VC over RC equals VT over RT. But, we know that we know that all of these are the same so i can just replace all those a b and c's with just vt and then i can divide by vt which gives us One on RA plus one on RB plus one on RC equals one on RT. In this case, the total resistance is actually equal to the, the, the one over the total resistance is equal to the sum of one over each of the individual resistors. This makes calculating the total resistance for a parallel circuit a lot more challenging. So, if I have three 12 ohm resistors, I could say the total resistance is equal to 1 over 12 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 12, adding up each of those resistors, which is going to be 1 over RT is going to be 3 over 12. But that doesn't tell me what RT is. If I flip both of those though, RT equals 12 over 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So instead of having, and this is the part that's a bit weird, instead of having three 12 ohm resistors in parallel you could substitute that with for the effective resistors resistance of one resistor at shit one resistor at four ohms and so that's a different way to look at it one resistor at 4 ohms is the same as three resistors at 12 ohms in parallel. Now, what I find interesting here, and I'm going to talk about this in the next slide, is this idea. We went from three 12 ohm resistors to one 4 ohm resistor. We went from three really big resistors that were hard to get through is the same as going through one really easy resistor. And I always thought that was weird. And I was like, wait, what? Hold on. The, resist the total resistance is less than any of the individual resistors. And it turns out that's true. The reason that's true is that two resistors in parallel just means that there is more paths for current to flow through. More paths means a higher current, so therefore a lower resistance to the flow overall. 
this means the effective resistance will, or will be lower than any individual resistor. Now the picture that I saw that went along with this was this one here. If you had a pump that was moving water through a cycle, and you're trying to squeeze that water through a tiny resistor. If you then have instead two tiny resistors, you've doubled the flow. Even though the resistor is still really difficult for the water to get through, you've doubled the flow. And because you've doubled the flow, you've effectively halved the total resistance. And it's like, I was like, oh, when I saw this picture, for some reason, everything made sense. By adding more resistors, you might, in parallel, you might think, oh, you know, I'm making it harder for the water to get through. I'm making it harder for the electrons to get through. But essentially, you're just providing another path. It's just like saying, you know, if you have a balloon, you put a tiny pinprick in it, you know, water's going to come out. If you put a lot of tiny pinpricks, then lots of water is going to come out of different parts. Sure, it's still going to be difficult for the water to get through, but you've now created a big mesh, a big way, a lots of ways for the water to escape. So therefore, high current. I, I just think this is kind of cool, even if it's, a bit random. I just think it's a bit interesting that, yeah. And then I did, I looked at the maths, and it doesn't matter what the resistors are. Even if you've got a, I was like, well, what if you had, this is going to get really nerdy here, sorry. What if you had a 100 ohm resistor? So, you know, really, 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 really hard for the current to get through. And then you had a 1 ohm resistor down the bottom. Really easy. What happens if you hook those in parallel? What is going to be the effective resistance? If you do that, the effective resistance, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 100, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 100, and then you flip those upside down, 1 over the answer, it becomes 0 0.99 ohms of resistance. It's still less, not much less, but it's still less. It's overall, it's still an easier part because some electrons will still go through that top resistor. Anyway, that's not the point. I'm going to move on. Are we okay if we move on? I'm hearing no screams of wait, 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 sir. So I'm going to keep going. The next bit here is, so on the left is the circuits that I just showed you before for series. On the right is parallel. Here are the rules for parallel circuits. In the parallel circuits, the current in each branch adds to the total current. For example, the total current is I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. The total resistance is 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Each path through a circuit must have a voltage drop equal to the voltage drop of the cell. So Ultimately, again, this is the this is Kirchhoff's rule. It says that it doesn't matter which which um doesn't matter which loop you go through. It it will always lose the same amount of voltage. What I kind of find interesting with this is if you kind of look compare the series to the parallel, compare the series to the parallel you will find that, that the total current, I1 equals I2 equals the total current for series, is very similar to I, V1 equals V2 for parallel. And you will kind of see that these two things are linked. And it's kind of, I don't know, I just find that a little bit interesting. I, when I made this slide last night, I was double checking it, I thought, isn't that interesting that 
In the first one, the current in series circuits, the current is the same everywhere. In a parallel circuit, the voltage drop is the same everywhere. In a, in a series circuit, you add the resistance. In a parallel circuit, you add one over the resistance. So yeah, um, going back to that previous line before, you just need to memorize, if you don't like, if you don't want to memorize how these formulas are created, you do just need to memorize these formulas. Let's look at some of them in action. Um, I want you guys to work out the first one on your own. Go. Write it down in chat. Get the answer. A parallel circuit has a resistor measuring 2 ohms and a resistor measuring 5 ohms. Work it out for me. Let me know what you get. Use a calculator if you need to. I'm going to sit here and wait for a little bit. And then we'll do the second one maybe together. Anyone said in chat yet what the answer is? No, not yet. My money's on Kelvin, but I'm also secretly hoping um, Fukui beats everyone. But I'm waiting to see how you guys go with that first one. Maybe a wild card will figure this one out first. Maybe Anthony will get it first. He's been on the ball today. Yeah, I want you guys to solve the first one. 1.42. 1.42 is what I got. Let's do this together for those of you because I didn't get very many answers here. Thanks, Kelvin. I appreciate it. What is the total resistance? Um, if you guys want to start the second one as well, that's fine on me. So I'll do this first one for those of you that have no idea. Why not? Oh. One on RT is going to be one on R1 plus one on R2. Um, so therefore, 1 on RT equals 1 on 2 plus 1 on 5, which is going to be 1 on RT is going to be equal to, there are a couple of ways you could do this. Can I, um, there's a couple of ways you could do this. I'm just going to go with, I'm going to go, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm going to go with the easy answer because I can't, I, yeah. One on is going to be 0 0.5, one on 5 is going to be 0 0.2. So one on RT equals 0 0.7. That means that RT equals 1 over 0 0.7, which turns out to be 1.43. Now, if you wanted to, you could be a bit, you could do this properly and go one on RT equals one on, um, we'll go with, it's going to become five over 10 plus two over 10, which is going to become seven over 10. So therefore RT equals 10 divided by seven, but it's still going to give you the same damn answer. And no, uh, no, Phoenix, I know if you're listening here, you're like, oh, can I just leave it as 10 over 7, like an exact formula, like it would in maths? The answer is no, you can't. Uh, you have to use, you have to do some ugly, you know, approximation. Um, maybe Phoenix isn't thinking that. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't pick on Phoenix so much. Um, ladies and gents, could I get you to try this one here?
Okay, six ohms for the next one. Six ohms. Ampy also got six ohms. So this bad boy here is very similar to the previous one. When an effective resistance is, whoa, what is the effective resistance of 2120 watt like? Load? Well, again, one on RT is going to be one on 120 plus one on 120. And you're going to do that 20 times. Or one on, we'll go with one on R1 plus one on R2 plus one on R20. And yeah, but they're all the still, they're all one on RT is still the same as saying 20 times one on 120, which is going to become 20 on 120. So that means RT, how do I solve it? I flip the first one, so it becomes RT. I flip the second one, so it becomes 120 divided by 20. 120 divided by 20 is the same as saying, well, how many 20s go into 120? That's the same as saying six. Six ohms. But even though, again, it's that same idea of, you know, you've got 20 paths that the electrons could go through. So of course, the total resistance overall even is going to be less because there's just so many different paths for those electrons to travel down. So that's how you can do these things, just the numbers. I've got about 15 minutes left, so I'm going to start to tackle the actual, the actual circuits. I've got one, two, three, and then that's it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get through all that. So I'm going to make a start. I'm probably going to maybe get the first two done. But yeah, if and again, if I'm going too quickly, please say so because I would love to know what you got if I'm going too quickly or not because I can't tell. Okay. Now with this bad boy here, we're going to do the same. Believe it or not, we're actually going to tackle this parallel circuit the same way that we tackled the series circuit because I was trying to teach you guys a method that will work with all circuits. We are going to work out what the voltage drop through A is, the voltage drop through B is, and the total voltage drop. Now you have to be aware though, this is not a series circuit, so the rules are a little bit different. The total voltage is six volts, but the rules according to um, parallel circuits is that each loop must drop six volts. So if each loop must drop six volts, then VA is six volts, and VB is also six volts you couldn't do that before with a series circuit because you know the total voltage drop over the circuit is you know each of the each of the um, resistors dropped a bit of the voltage but here no, no 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 here it doesn't matter here we only really care about um here we only really care about the uh, the voltage drops is going to be the same. So I was rambling. I stopped myself from rambling. Let's keep going. RA, RB, and RT. Now RA, we know that's 3 ohms. RB, we also know that's 3 ohms. RT. Now if I've got some nerds here, we can work out RT. RT equals 1 on RA. So 1 on RT equals 1 on RA plus 1 on RB. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to leave this blank for the moment. I can work it out, but I'm going to leave it blank. You'll see why. <laughs> Leaving it blank because I'm lazy. Now, we've got IA, IB, and IT. Now, sorry, I keep bumping the switch. So, IA, 
we don't know what the counter A is, we don't know what the counter B is, we don't know what the total current is. But just like how we did before, we know we know a voltage drop and a resistance. So I equals V divided by R equals six volts divided by three and three ohms. It's gonna be two amps. That means through this circuit, we've got two amps is going through the top one. Now, because of symmetry, because it's the same current, it's exactly the same, uh, it's exactly the same formula for B, So that means the current through the top is two amps. The current through the bottom one is two amps. And when those combine, two amps plus two amps is going to leave us with what? Can someone write down really quickly, what is two amps plus two amps going to leave us with for our V total? Nice and easy one. Thank you, Kelvin. Four. Four amps. According to Kirchhoff's law, the currents add up together because V in must equal V out. For two amps and two amps going in, I must have four amps coming out. Now, listen, I'm lazy. You can go one on RT, but I prefer to, because I'm lazy, I prefer to just do this. RT equals V divided by I equals six divided by four, and six divided by four is 1.5. Now, which means that RT is 1.5 ohms. Again, less than the two resistors is easier. Overall, the resistors, those two resistors could be replaced with a 1.5 ohm resistor. Now, if you wanted to, I'm not saying you can't go 1 on RT is equal to 1 on 3 plus 1 on 3 equals 2 on 3. RT equals 3 on 2 equals 1.5. You could do that, by all means. Knock yourselves out. But I actually prefer this one because just... I'm lazy and I just find that Ohm's law is easier to do than adding the reciprocals. It's up to you guys though, which, which method you use. But I'm gonna try and show you that you can use both of them. Now, I'm gonna do one more example. I'm gonna do the fifth one and then that's gonna be in the last two or three minutes before we run out of time. I'm gonna get you guys to let me know how much of this stuff you've got. And then I'm gonna do two random little things at the end. First thing I'm gonna do is though, we're gonna do this and five minutes talking about the fifth one. Now, this is still a parallel circuit. It does not look the same as the other parallel circuit, but it's still a parallel circuit. I can tell it's a parallel circuit, because there is a branch here. Some of the current's gonna go up and some of the current's gonna go down. Now here's the question for you. Where is gonna be, where, which one of these two out of A and B, which one of these two do you think is gonna have the higher current, A or B? Can I get a guess here? Which one's gonna have higher current, A or B? Who guesses A? Just write it down in chat. Who guesses that A is going to have a higher current than B? Or who guesses that B is going to have a higher current than A? Which one's, which one's got the higher current? B is going to have the higher current. Okay. What about, what does everyone else think? Does, Everyone agree with Vu? 
I want to give one more answer. Is B going to have a higher current or is A going to have a higher current? B, okay. All right, so let's have a look here. If I'm an electron, if I'm a charge, am I going to want to go through the path with less resistance that's easier for me to get through or the path that is harder because it's got a higher resistance? The answer is A. A is much easier for the electrons to go through. So therefore, it's going to have the highest current. So let's have a look at, let's break down this circuit and we'll see how we go. Four minutes left. We're going to start with the voltage drops. Now the voltage drops, we know the total voltage is quite easily 10 volts. And again, we know that this forms a path. So VB is going to be 10 volts. We know that the top one forms a path, its own path, and because all the voltage must get dropped over every um, in a loop, that means that all the voltage is going to have to get dropped over just this one resistor. So VA is going to equal 10 volts as well. Now, resistance RA is 2 ohms, RB is 3 ohms, RT, now I can work out RT by adding these two together, but I can't be bothered. I'm going to skip that, and I'm going to do instead IA. Now, the current through A, I don't know what the current through A is, but again, I know that I know the voltage and the resistance. So doing it over here, V equals I R, I equals V divided by R equals 10 divided by 3, which is going to be 3.33 amps. Now, we can't cheat like we did the last one because there are different resistance. So for the second one, shit. Crap. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I know. I bet someone's pointing out. So you just did one. You just did 10 divided by 3. It's actually 10 divided by 2 because you're looking at the 2 ohm resistor. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm an idiot. No, that's okay. We all make mistakes. As long as we learn from our mistakes, then that's the main thing. Uh, IB equals VB divided by RB equals 10 divided by 3 equals 3.33 amps. Now, remember, and that's exactly what we suspected. So the second resistor has, the second resistor, which got the higher resistance, has less current than the top resistor. So if I've got 5 amps coming in from the top and 3.3 amps coming in from the bottom, when you sub those together, RT equals RA. Keep making mistakes here, guys. I'm sorry about that. IT equals IA plus IB is going to be the total current is going to be 5 plus 3.3 .3 is going to be 8.3 amps. Uh, now, if we know that that's 8.3 amps, 
and find out that's 8.3 amps, then that means that the RT, the total current, is going to be R equals V divided by I is going to be 10 divided by 8.33 equals One point two. And of course, as I said, you could just work that out by going one on RT equals um one on RT equals one on two plus one on three equals Whoa, I can zoom in. And now I'm so one on our so RT equals one on um okay. Now This is a little bit of a different scenario. Again, the total current is less than each of the in any of the individual. If the total resistance is less than each of the individual resistors, we notice the more current goes to the top than the bottom, but they still add at the end. Uh, they still add to this at the end here, so that's pretty important as well. Um, and so we can figure out that all of these things work together quite nicely. That's pretty much the time for us.